Breathing, breathing, breathing. Hey guys, my name is Damien Cooper. Welcome to Monkey Pixels. We shot a dance video. We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. So last summer we've been to this awesome location here in Vienna. It's an abandoned village. Um, it has really a lot of different cool places like this abandoned warehouse. There's also an old theater which is completely covered with mold. And underneath that uh, big abandoned warehouse, there's another location. I don't really know what it is, but it looked really freaking cool. Oh. We're at this old, oh, shit. rusty place. Oh. You guys About to walk down. One, two, three. <laughs> so I think you the plan talk? was to go over there and have this um, yellow tubes in the back. Or maybe down there, I don't know. So we're at our first shooting location. It's in a cellar from some abandoned building. I don't even know what it is. So we're just scouting the place to see where our second scene will take place, where she's dancing. And we're going to light the whole place up with red and blue or maybe green light. And then it should look really freaking cool. So we wanted to shoot a video for the gimbal review of the Xeon Crane 2 with the C200, but instead of just rocking around with a gimbal in our garden or in our apartment, we got a professional dancer, Anna. I'm Anna, I'm from Vienna and I'm a dancer and we will shoot something great today. You can see the review over here, this side, okay. And you can also see the dance video in the description below. Check it out before and then come back to this video uh, because this is going to be the behind the scenes of it. Um, since we wanted to use it on YouTube, uh, we didn't really want to have a regular song that plays in the charts and we just uh, have her pick a song from Artlist uh, so she could actually study a little bit of a choreography. Choreography. So she started a little choreography to a list of songs from Artlist we gave her and she didn't really have a lot of time but in my opinion she did an awesome job of just getting the right choreography for that song and I really liked it. So we never really shot a dance performance video before, but we did shoot several music videos and we treated the video as it would have been a music video. So what we did is we just had her perform the same choreography in different settings, shooting from different angles. We usually do that in most of our shoots. We shoot one wide angle, one medium shot, as well as a close up. So we can intercut between the different angles so uh, that we have a lot of wiggle room in post so that it just looks more interesting and is more action driven. Since we also had two different locations, we wanted to intercut between one location to the other. So um, she really had to nail down her choreography so that we could just use the same part of the song and just easily intercut between the movement. And we also recorded audio on set of the actual song. So we only had to throw out everything in Final Cut afterwards, create a multicam sequence and we're able to just sync all the different angles together uh, via audio sync. And Anna did a really great job keeping the entire choreography in sync for the entire duration of the song. So it was really easily for us to just intercut between different scenarios in post. So obviously it's a dance performance video, so there wasn't really a lot of storytelling involved. Okay, I, w I just want to mm. have you like walk into the room, yes. establish where we are, something yeah. like that. Yeah, that'll be pretty cool. This part. Yeah. When he begins to rap, the courage that he begins. Exactly, cool. But since the song starts really slowly, I uh, wanted to get the audience have a feel for the location. So we shot a little bit of her 
going into that location where she was actually dancing in the slow part of the video to get a feel for where we are. So initially we just had her walk into the location from different angles, but Belle said that it's a little bit too long and too boring. So uh, she suggested that we intercut a little bit of her preparation movements um, to get a feel for what actually is about to happen in the video, which I think was a really good uh, option to not have it as boring in the beginning. Please don't fall into any rabbit holes. I'll try. Yeah. Um, how far will you walk around? Because I don't want you to fall into one of these holes or something. So I kind of like want to know where you be in terms of how far will you move around? It's very tight, but I... Yeah, I don't know. We have to... All right, maybe just yeah, two ones and then we'll see and go from there. So in the beginning, because as always safety first, we had to prep the location a little because there were really, there were deep holes that went down several feet. We had a spot for Anna to dance in, but since I was rocking around with her a lot, I was really in danger of just tripping into one of these holes and I would, could have really hurt myself. So we prepped the location prior to shooting a little by putting wooden boards over the holes so that I wasn't really in danger of tripping into these holes. So we got the wide shot, we got the medium shot, we got it in slow motion, now we need the extreme close-up, so I need the 50 millimeters, please, which is going to be tricky. Why? Because if you're filming, I've never really filmed with 50 millimeters on a gimbal before, and this is what we're trying to do here. Trying to get the 50 mil on the gimbal and still get some stable shots and focusing at the same time. I have no idea that that works, because usually we would do that handheld on a tripod, but for the sake of the video, we're trying it on the gimbal now. But why is it more difficult to put on the 50 than the 16 to 35? It's way smaller. Um, it's not about the lens, it's about the focal length. So the thing is, if you have a higher focal length, like the 50 mil, it's uh, way harder to get a stable image, handheld on the tripod or even on the gimbal. So with a wide angle, it's really easy and forgiving if you have a little bit of shakes because you don't really see them because you have so much in your image. But if you have a really tight angle, then all that uh, micro shakes and all the jitters are really present in the video so the gimbal really needs to do a good job of stabilizing otherwise you will have really shaky footage so let's test this let's test it So we mostly used available light on set, but we also used a little bit of our artificial lighting and this is how. So the plan is we're at the first location and we just set up the lights, which uh, probably are more decoration than anything. Uh, they don't really function as a light source since it's really bright here and we couldn't really illuminate the room with just these two lights anyway. But we need them for the second setup downstairs because there's no light at all. So right now we're just setting them up to have them in the background as kind of a key lighting and a little bit of decoration shots. So upstairs we went for a more natural look and downstairs we wanted to have a contrast to it uh, so we chose to have the green and red light. We kind of experimented with a little bit of blue and red, with a little bit of purple and the best combination we found was just red and green. So as for color grading and effects. Upstairs I just did the color correction, added a little bit of a lot to um, have the colors pop a little more. One thing I added in post was these light beams that came out of the left window. They weren't initially there, but once I saw the location and I saw the light coming in from the left side, I really know I wanted to have these kind of light beams with a little bit of dusty feeling. Change of plans. Uh, we're doing a 180 right now and shooting in the different direction because I really like these, the light coming through these um, boards on the, on the windows, which looks pretty amazing. So I downloaded a um, plugin from, I think it's called Pixel Studios. Uh, link is also in the description below. Go check them out. Not a sponsored video, but uh, it was easy to use. In the beginning, I wanted to use some anamorphic lens flares to our artificial lights, but then after doing it in a couple of shots, I really noticed that it's just too much going on there with all the light in the back and all this location. So we decided to not do it. As always, we are filming with the Westcott Flex lights down here because they're crazy portable. We fit everything in two suitcases. No, actually, we fit everything in two backpacks, which two is insane. Backpacks, yeah. um, so again, we want to have a little bit of color contrast. We're at this really cool location here and we tried a little bit of purple, uh, blue, green, we brought reds and we decided to go for red and green. We never really used the green before and I think that kind of fits the location pretty well. 
and red is on the other spectrum of the color chart a little so we have a little bit of contrast here. So downstairs we wanted to go for a contrasty look to our natural feeling upstairs. So we had the shadows pulled down um, as well as really intensify the saturation. I also added a little bit of an anamorphic lens flare there uh, for the couple shots where you could actually see the light being in the shot. This wasn't really to depth, but if you're interested in our color grading workflow that we use in general, just let us know in the comments below so maybe we can do a video in the future. So what I'm thinking about is how many takes do we need and if we need it to have everything in slow motion or so if I film everything in 50 frames or if I start shooting in 25 frames and then go to 50 frames and then into cut between slow motion and regular motion or if I just shoot everything in 50 frames and then decide on the spot if I want to have something in slow motion or not. So most of our videos are leaning heavily towards slow motion because we really like that crisp slow motion b-roll in almost all of our videos. But since this video was initially a gimbal review, we wanted to have everything in 25 frames because slow motion looks smoother uh, anyway. We kind of wanted to test the gimbal and its capabilities without having to use so much slow motion. So most of the video is just filmed in 25 frames, but then again for a little bit of b-roll towards the end where she started freestyling and her choreography ended, uh, we wanted to have the option to integrate a little bit of slow motion, so most of the time we filmed in 25 frames, but as for the slow motion shots in the end we had at least one take of every scene in 50 frames, so we had the option to intercut a little bit of slow motion. I'm trying to track her with the auto track function but apparently I didn't track her right. So for these kind of videos, we usually use our dual pixel autofocus on the C200 a lot because it's really good and because I'm moving and changing the distance between her and me a lot, manually focusing alone on the gimbal isn't really an option. And as for having another focus puller to do that um, on set, we need to have a really experienced focus puller as well as way more equipment, which we just didn't have. So we used the dual pixel autofocus, but since she was just jumping left and right and moving out of frame and I was moving a lot too, I tried to track her with the tracking mode of the C200, but for some reason it kept failing on me, which was a little bit disappointing because that is actually what it is for, but that didn't really work out. So I had a little bit of test runs in and out, so I needed to see her choreography so I could know where she was walking um, to be able to actually pull focus easier uh, manually as well as with the dual pixel autofocus. So initially our team consists of three people. That's usually Bell, me and one set runner or PA. And as for the last shoot on the DJ set, we had Moritz, our friend, who is also studying film at the moment. But he actually canceled on us last minute, which was literally last minute, because he got really sick. So we had to do everything with the two of us. And since the location was really hard to access because we had to jump over fences, we couldn't really bring any pelican cases or suitcases for that matter. So we only used two backpacks, which was insane because we had two lights, two light stands, the gimbal, the a C200 cinema camera, as well as the monitors, the batteries, and another behind the scenes camera, and all of that fit into two backpacks, and we actually had a little bit of room we could have even brought a drone if we wanted to, which is completely insane. So the one thing is our carry-on by Low Pro, and it actually doubles as a suitcase as well as a carry-on. So you can take the inlay out, use it as a backpack, and still have a carry-on. So there's actually a two-in-one kind of bag situation, and we really like it, and we take it on all our flights now. The other one is just our Low Pro camera backpack, which I really like because it's re really versatile, and you can attach things to the outside of the backpack. Links are in the description below, so check them out if you like them. Nice. Hallelujah! Nice. <laughs> nice. So big thanks to Belle for filming all the behind the scenes and I think she's doing a really great job of editing all the behind the scenes and making off videos so far. Yeah, I'm very happy to do it and if you like it, Give it a thumbs up as always and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Bye! Have a good time! We're so stupid. <laughs> that was awkward.